και κύριοι οικοδεσπότε τη Ελλάδα. Αξιότιμη κυρία Αναστασιάδη, αξιότιμη κυρία Σέλοχα Τάνκ, θεοφιλέστατε, αξιότιμη κυρία Αντιπρόεδρε τη Κυβέρνηση, Representatives of the political parties, dear ministers, Your Excellency, Ambassador of South Africa, dear speakers, dear Mrs. Vardinoyani, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Foundation Mariana Vardinoyani, I have the honor to welcome you here today to this unforgettable and special event which is a tribute to a great person and a great idea. The idea is that the most important part of the fight for human rights is school, education. It is our effort to give to the younger generations the tools, the means, if you wish, in order to fight for the protection of human rights. The man that we honor today is the person that we owe this idea to. In my opinion, if we go back to those very important decades at the end of the last century, in the first decade of the 21st century, the period where the history changed, the world changed, and we were lucky to witness that change. So if we were to think back to those important people who affected that change. In my opinion, Nelson Mandela was one of the persons who facilitated the change of the world. And in my opinion, there is no other personality that uh, affected that change in the way that Mandela did. Not only by contributing political ideas or political fights, but first and foremost by becoming a role model by becoming a moral is still important today. We had the luck, some of us and some of you, to meet at this building and to listen to him speaking here in Zapium. So, this is a tribute to Nelson Mandela. We have made it very clear in our policy that uh, South Africa is a country, a country of many races. There is room for all the various races in this country. There are many people who feel that it is useless and futile for us to continue talking peace and non-violence against a government whose reply is only savage attacks on an unarmed and defenseless people. July 1918, in the village of South Africa, a child is born, Racholitla, who would change humanity forever. A special child who, when he would become an adult, would keep that innocence and that childlike gaze and that would use it as a tool against the cruelty of people. At school, his teacher gave him a new name which is now synonym with equality, justice, calmness and uh, equality. When I went to school, Tingane asked, what is your name? I told him my African name, Rahulislas. He says, no, I don't want that one. You must have a Christian name. So I say, no, I don't have one. She says, you are from today, you are going to be Nelson. O micros Nelson. Young Nelson, who was the son of the three 
survives later. When he was a child, he could run free, he could swim or climb the trees. The realization that this freedom is not a given came pretty early. And right then, a fight started that would last for his whole life. As he said to his defense, he was ready to die for this. Against white domination, and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all persons live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea for which I hope to live and to see realized. But my Lord, if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. In 1964, he was condemned on a life sentence. He was sentenced to life imprisonment, but no one could put his ideals and his vision to prison. Violence and humiliation never broke his spirit. On the other hand, they have shaped the leader that served later not only his people, but humanity as a whole. From prison, he taught us that uh, peace is stronger than violence, forgiveness is stronger than fear, and generosity is stronger than hatred. And we still have a lot to learn from his example. That special person may have left the world better than it was, and now his legacy is to our hands, and we should keep it alive and we should leave it behind to the next generation and we should build on this vision for equality and freedom for everyone. For your support for Mandela Day, for all those who continue to give service in their own way, I thank you. We each, every one of us, can make an imprint When Mandela celebrated his 19th birthday, talking to a large crowd of people in the Hyde Park in London, he announced that it is now time to give this idea to new people. Then we had the idea of making a tribute, the so-called Nelson Mandela Day. This day is the 18th of July, but this event is preparing the Nelson Mandela Day of 2021. Today, there is a simple message. If Mandela served for 67 years of his life in the fight for human rights, freedom, for a better society, if you wish, each and one of us should serve 67 minutes in the spectrum of his life to a social goal, if you wish. This is the message of today's event. And I will try to keep it short, to give it 67 minutes. So if there is a person, a woman in Greece, who is linked to Mandela's ideas, and especially to the idea that education is the right tool that will allow us to uh, fight uh, for those ideals and for the younger generation. In my opinion, this is Mrs. Mariana Vardinogiani. The United Nations Organization, for this reason, awarded her last year with the Nelson Mandela Prize for 2020, which is a great honor and a great distinction. Mrs. Vardinogiani has told us that she will fight with all her powers towards this effort, towards this goal. She wants the younger generation through education 
to stay connected to the ideals of Nelson Mandela with the idea that the world can become a better place or at least a more just place. I would like to ask Mrs. Perdinoyani to um, come here at the podium. You have the floor, Mrs. Perdinoyani. Mrs. Anastasiade, Your Excellencies, Mr. Vice President of the Government, dear representatives of the parties, ladies and gentlemen, dear ministers, dear Rather, I apologize, Your Excellency, the Ambassador of South Africa, dear leaders of the army, dear Mr. Avramopoulos, dear Mrs. Arvele, ladies and gentlemen. It is, I am very moved that I can welcome here today in Zapio, in this historic building for Greece, in order to honor the memory of a person who is a worldwide symbol for human rights. I'm talking, of course, about Nelson Mandela. We are all here today to talk about freedom, about social justice, about democracy and equality among people, about peace and reconciliation of people, but also for the differences of the civilizations, for injustice and poverty, but also to send to every young people the message that it is worthwhile having dreams and it is good to fight for those dreams. Because every person in the planet has the power to transform this world with her imprint. Nelson Mandela worked all his nights for all those values and those visions. This is his legacy for the next generations. Those are the messages that we want to send with Nelson Mandela Day, which is celebrated at the 18th of July. And um, this is why we, are, we have organized this tribute today. This initiative is for yesterday because we want to honor the memory of this great fighter, but also for today because we want to award the Nelson Mandela Foundation for the great contribution on human rights. And of course, his CEO, Mr. Selo Khatang. I would like to thank Mr. Khatang warmly for being here today. But also, we want to talk about tomorrow, because we want to use education in order to lead our young people to knowledge and then to respect and then to the promotion of human rights and the build for a better future. Our foundation has been working towards this direction for the last eight years uh, with the program Speak Truth to Power of the Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Foundation, which we uh, implement in schools and educators all around Greece. I was not a messiah, I was a simple human being who became a leader through special circumstances, according to Nelson Mandela himself. It was proven but he was much more, that he was much more. He was a change, he was hope, not only for South Africa and his people, but also for humanity as a whole. When it comes to human rights, modern world could be separated to the era before Mandela and the era after Nelson Mandela. Right now, I would like to thank warmly Her Excellency, the President of the Hellenic Republic, Mrs. Katerina Sakelaropoulou, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Antonio Gutierrez, and the Director General of UNESCO, Mrs. Audrey Azoulay, for the valuable contribution to this event and for the constant fight for human rights and democracy. The messages that they have sent to us are a great honor for our foundation. I would also like to thank especially the First Lady of the Republic of Cyprus and my valuable friend, Mrs. Andri Anastasiadi, for all the common fights that we have done and for having always been by our side and honoring 
this event today by being here. I would also like to thank the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Nicodendias, the Minister of Justice, Mr. Costa Tiaras, to the um, President of Labor and Social Affairs, Mrs. Domna Mikhailidou, and the former Commissioner of uh, uh, Internal Affairs and migration of the European Union, Mr. Dimitris Avramopoulos, who are honoring us today. I would also like to thank Her Excellency, the Ambassador of South Africa in Greece, Mrs. Bere Rose Sisulu, for her presence and her support. Yesterday at the hospital, Mr. Hatang and Her Excellency, the Ambassador, has uh, have given me a quote from their country. Mother is keeping the knife from the blade in order to protect her children. I'm keeping that code in my heart as a valuable treasure. I would also like to thank the rector, uh, Mrs. Eleni Arveler. I am certain that her speech will make us more wise when it comes to our um, when it comes to our way for the younger generation. I would also like to thank the president of Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Center, Mrs. Kerry Kennedy, for her contribution to this event, but also, above all, for the collaboration of our foundations when it comes to human rights. I am very proud and happy that this event also includes the dreams of children, includes art and their voice, but also unique melodies inspired from Nelson Mandela and South Africa. I would also like to thank the awarded composer, Mark Chait, for being here today with us, as well as the performer, Mrs. Patricia Abrams. I would also like to thank the host of this event, Mr. Pavlos Timas, for his valuable contribution to this night. I would like to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for being here today, since you make the messages more loud. Let's make every day a Mandela Day. Ubuntu, the spirit of Nelson Mandela, Ubuntu, includes the idea and it is a way of life and thinking based on the principles of respect, solidarity, trust, selflessness and also fraternity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Verginogiani, for your kind words and for organizing this event. Her Excellency, the President of Hellenic Republic, Mrs. Katerina Sekeleropoulou, has sent a video message. And now you can listen to her message. With the opportunity of the anniversary of the Day of Nelson Mandela. Today, on this tribute, I would like to ask you to remember his words, Nelson Mandela's words, we can change the world and make it better. It is to our hand to make the difference. The 18th of July, which was his birthday, more than a tribute to his legacy, is rather an invitation to the younger generations to promote the principles that he fought for and to take a leading role in the fight for democracy, for human dignity, and for human rights. To fight in order to tackle social injustice and to, to fight for the reconciliation among people, to fight for injustice and any kind of oppression and discrimination. And at the same time, this day reminds us that we should give the tools to the children for the, to fight this fight in, from education. So within the framework of the United Nations organizations and other organizations, education has been promoted as a right according to the Convention for Human Rights of the United Nations organization, as well as it is a prerequisite for the um, respect of the other human rights. There are also a lot of legal texts and conventions internationally that have contributed into uh, establishing this right. I'm talking about education. It is also important that the, the uh, I'm sorry, the agenda of 2030 for sustainable development includes education. 
the principle of non-discrimination is a basic aspect of the right for education, which means that either all people should have access to education and that education should promote respect. The contribution of specialized agencies of the UN and especially the UNESCO for promoting this human right has been and still is very important and is safeguarded with the first convention but also by the implementation of programs such as education for all. Greece on its side includes in its constitution that education is free, access to education is free for all people since education is a very important goal of the state. Moreover, the chart of fundamental rights but also the European Social Roadmap and the revisited Social Roadmap include that right, the right to education. Our country has been implementing that right and safeguarding that right even in these very difficult times by promoting digital and remote learning, but also allowing uh, the children of migrants and refugees to have access to, those, uh, to that education. Therefore, we should strike to make this a worldwide uh, benefit. According to a research of UNESCO, for 700 million people around the world, they are illiterate, they cannot read and write due to the very bad conditions of living uh, that are caused by poverty, health crisis or um, wars. The COVID-19 pandemic has uh, showcased an inequality of around the world, among others, to education, since it has affected 90% of pupils and students. On the other hand, it promoted remote education, tele-education, with the use of new technologies that can be, uh, become a very valuable tool in order to give access to educational programs to people all around the world. Right now, it is worth remembering the example that has been left behind by a very important personality that was linked to Nelson Mandela, and for which us, the Greek people, were very proud of. I'm talking about the Greek Yorgos Bezos, who was a lawyer and a human rights activist, who was distincted as the lawyer and the close collaborator of Nelson Mandela during the most difficult times of the apartheid regime. However, something that it is not widely known is that Bezos has founded Sahedi School, first and foremost for the children of the Greek community, but at the same time allowing children from every tribe and uh, nationality to go to that school. Today, let's honor the message of Nelson Mandela by safeguarding his great legacy and by making it uh, an example for the present and the future. Thank you very much. This was the message by Her Excellency, the President of the Hellenic Republic. I would like to remind you that, you, that the United Nations Organization, for the, from the first moment, has adopted the idea of a Nelson Mandela Day. In 2000, back in 2009, the Secretary General of the UN, Mr. Antonio Gutierrez, has been sending uh, his message. Greetings to the Mariana V. Vardinoyanis Foundation and everyone involved in this event to honor the legacy of the great Nelson Mandela. Each year, we pay tribute on Nelson Mandela's birthday to an extraordinary global advocate for equality, dignity, and solidarity. As we face the continued trials of the COVID-19 pandemic, Nelson Mandela's enduring message of hope and solidarity is more important than ever. Nelson Mandela devoted his life to working against inequality in all its forms. In addressing the deep inequalities exposed and exploited by the pandemic, we can draw inspiration from his humanism, his unflagging optimism, and his perseverance in the face of enormous challenges. Fighting inequality starts with children and education, one of our most powerful tools to end inequality and discrimination. I welcome the emphasis the Mariana V. Vardinoyanis Foundation puts on protecting children's rights and improving their living conditions, including through education. In honoring Nelson Mandela, 
let's resolve to be part of the quest for a better future of peace, dignity, opportunity, and human rights for all. This was the message of the UN uh, Secretary General. UNESCO is part of the United Nations for the last four years has a new uh, director, Mrs. Audrey Azoulay. She is the second woman who has been leading uh, UNESCO as the director general. And Mrs. Azoulay has sent from a message uh, the following video. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear Ma Mariana Vardinoyanis, in celebrating Nelson Mandela International Day, we are celebrating a lifelong commitment to dignity and equality. And I would like first to acknowledge the Nelson Mandela Foundation for its work in promoting and advancing this uh, essential engagement. In these efforts, you play a very important role, dear Mariana, through the remarkable work of your foundation and through your personal involvement with UNESCO as our goodwill ambassador. And here at UNESCO, this commitment is one we have also made our own. Because Nelson Mandela knew just how important education was in building a fairer world. His legacy is even stronger this year after what we've been through, this uh, pandemic that kept nine in 10 students out of classrooms worldwide, reminding us that education is a fundamental yet fragile human right. To protect it, UNESCO launched the Global Education Coalition in March last uh, year. This coalition brings together more than 175 partners to support distance learning and to accompany the reopening of schools. If we are so active in this field, it is because education is a project for all society. And this was another of Mandela's key messages, which he underlined in 1997 when he said, the power of education extends beyond the development of skills we need for economic success. It can contribute to nation building and reconciliation. That is why we cannot envision the future we want without asking ourselves about the education we want for the future. And this is precisely the challenge of the global conversation we launched in 2019 on the futures of education. This collective uh, reflection movement will culminate in a report to be launched next November that will uh, propose a new approach for education uh, for 2050 and beyond. It aims to rethink educational tools, but also educational content, to ensure that education can offer solutions, propositions to contemporary challenges. Education is also, of course, the best way of fighting all forms of prejudice in order to learn to respect others in recognition of our shared humanity. And this struggle at the heart of Mandela's engagement and at the heart of UNESCO's mandate is one that we must continue today. We are committed here at UNESCO to doing this in all the fields covered by our mandate, uh, precisely following the global call against racism that was launched last December by our 193 member states, the Global Forum Against Racism and Discrimination took place this year and was an opportunity to work together on a reinforced roadmap for action. This roadmap relies heavily on the power of culture, cultural diversity, education, which we have mobilized for a long time now, notably through uh, the series of masterclass against racism and discrimination, which have already uh, brought together thousands of students. Dear friends, Nelson Mandela believed that the real makers of history are ordinary men and women. Respecting the right to education for all means enabling the men and women of tomorrow to make history and to construct a better world. And this is our shared ambition for the future. I thank you very much. This was the message by the Director General of UNESCO. And right now, I would like to ask Mrs. Andrea Anastasiadi, the First Lady of the Republic of Cyprus, to uh, join me here at the podium. Mrs. Anastasiades, you have the floor. Theophilestate. 
κύριε Αντιπρόεδρε της Ελληνικής Κυβέρνησης, κυρίες και κύριοι Υπουργοί, εξοχότατη κύριοι Πρέσβης, αγαπητή κυρία Βαρδινογιάννη, κυρία Αυδελέρ, αξιότιμη κύριε Χατάνκ, κυρίες και κύριοι. Είναι με ξεχωριστή χαρά που χαιρετίζω τη σημερινή on the basis of the International Nelson Mandela Day, which is celebrated each year at the 18th of July. Before saying anything else, kindly allow me to congratulate the Mariana V. Vardinogiani Foundation and especially its president, my dear friend Mariana Vardinogiani, for taking the initiative to organize this event. The foundation, led by its president, my dear friend Mariana, is always focusing on its goals, is doing an excellent, recognized work in not only in Greece but also abroad, on a social, cultural and charity level, always on the basis of the protection of human rights. This is also proved by the fact that Mrs. Vardinoyani was awarded the Nelson Mandela Prize for 2020 by the UN organization in recognition of her selfless action in various sectors. This recognition reflects and honors not only Greece, but also the Greek diaspora. This event is showcasing the action of Nelson Mandela is but another proof of the foundations and Mrs. Vardinogiani's personal commitment to showcase and protect human rights. We all have the duty to follow that example, having as a role model Nelson Mandela. Undoubtedly, Nelson Mandela is an iconic figure since he was a leader in the fight against inequality and discrimination all around the world. As a fighter against the last racist regime in the uh, West world, he stayed in the prison for 27 years. But after his imprisonment, he became the first president of South Africa in the first elections that were organized without racial segregation. He is one of the most recognized symbols of human rights of the 20th century. He stayed always true to his principles and values, and therefore he managed to be respected globally since he fought for the international reconciliation. Dear friends, during his trial he said, I have cherished the ideal of a democratic and a free society in which all persons live together in harmony and enjoy equal opportunities. It is an ideal which I hope to live for and to achieve it. But, if needs be, it is an ideal for which I am prepared to die. Those principles, values and ideals that became part of Nelson Mandela and uh, for which he uh, devoted his life today are of great importance. In an era that unfortunately we still have inequalities, racism and intolerance, his fight is a source of inspiration and is more timely than ever. The absolute respect to the human dignity is the best foundation on which we can base the operation of a society which has at its heart human. Therefore, the President and the Republic of Cyprus are committed through the policy that they have adopted to safeguard, promote uh, human rights for every citizen in our country. This commitment is first and foremost moral, but at the same time it is also a legal commitment since the Republic of Cyprus participates and has signed a lot of conventions on human rights and uh, since uh, Cyprus is a European Union member state. At the same time, Cyprus is a model for synergies in the region. 
Those synergies are the basis from the promotion and the creation of regional peace, security and stability, but also in order to protect future generations from threats. Let us not forget that we fight in my country for human rights and peace, and let us not forget that Cyprus for the last 47 years is under Turkish occupation. Therefore, in order to uh, realize our historic responsibility for the reunification of our country and in order to have human rights in our place, we have international community at our side and we will continue to uh, use the UN resolutions and the decisions of the Security Council as well as the European Aki. Dear friends, in order for human rights to become mainstream, we need to invest in education, starting from children, starting from the very young age. By educating our children, we create the citizens that we need for the future. Citizens that when they grow up, will be able to fight any kind of violence, exploitation, and they will um, fight also for human rights. Therefore, by understanding that importance, but also uh, let us not forget that we should keep working towards this direction, not only on an institutional, but also on a legal level. As Nelson Mandela said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Therefore, in this framework, we have, uh, I have took the initiative and I have cr created the independent body for social support in Cyprus. It is a body that supports young people which, after the difficult conditions created by the financial crisis in Cyprus, they had to stop their studies or they couldn't pay for uh, their studies. Therefore, this body has made my vision into a reality. And this vision was the following. No student without a degree. Ladies and gentlemen, now in the presence of Mr. Selo Hatang, the CEO of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, I would like to congratulate him for he, the award that he will get today, but also for his actions and work that the foundation is undertaking. I am certain that Mr. Selo Hatang's speech and the speeches by the rest of the distinguished speakers will contribute in the fight for human rights. Last but not least, I would like to congratulate for one more time the Mariana Vivardinoyani Foundation for the possibility that is giving us through this wonderful event to uh, fight uh, for our common uh, future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Anastasiadi. The Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, Mr. Dendias, uh, was here with us, but unfortunately he cannot be here today, but uh, he has sent a message. Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela was a leader of the fight against, for human rights for the citizens of South Africa, but also for the African continent. With his personality, he became a leader of an international movement. I'm talking about the movement for freedom, equality, dignity, democracy, and respect for human rights. He became a symbol, not only for the oppressed people of Africa, but for all people who fight for dignity all around the world. He was an iconic leader on uh, the international history, a source of inspiration for all around the world. Looking towards the future, he believed to this fight that would allow the reconciliation and the great victory. I'm talking about the reconciliation and a multiracial democracy in the era after the apartheid. He chose to serve for his whole life, uh, to serve on his whole life for this fight against apartheid, but also for the reconciliation of people. 
When he was accused at the um, Rivonia trial, he said that he is ready to die for the ideal of a democratic and free society, and not only for the victory of his tribe. And therefore, uh, this is a great achievement. Right now, I must mention the very important role that played uh, in this trial, in the Rivonia trial, his lawyer and personal friend, Yorgos Bezos. This great uh, Greek and South African person who unfortunately passed away a few months ago. Mandela, through Yorgos Bezos, get, got to know the ancient Greek civilization, uh, read the ancient Greek texts such as Sophocles that was provided to prison by his friend Yorgos Bezos and took inspiration. After his um, his, uh, when he got free, he uh, worked together with the former state president of South Africa, Frederick de Klerk, his co-Nobel laureate. But even then, Mandela stayed true to the choice that he had made in the beginning of his fight against the apartheid. He talked about reconciliation and forgiveness for all the citizens of South Africa. He was the first black president of South Africa in the first elections without uh, racial discriminations. He made South Africa in a colorful, peaceful, free nation with respect to human rights and democracy. Even when Nelson Mandela was elected the first president of the freed South Africa, he continued to make choices that um, allowed us to understand that he is truly iconic. He did not seek re-election for a second term, as it was his right. Therefore, he sent a message for another Africa that belongs to the younger generation and to the future of the African people. Nelson Mandela believed that uh, Greece is a symbol of democracy. He came to Greece in 2002. He signed uh, back then the Olympic Truce. He said that Greece is the mother of democracy, and he would very much like if South Africa would become one of his younger daughters. Nelson Mandela has been a leader of humanity. He has been a pioneer. There are a lot of people with great courage, with the possibility of becoming leaders of a fight, but there are not so many people that can lead their people after the fight towards peace and reconciliation. Therefore, Nelson Mandela has been a true leader for his people, but above all, a true and honorable person. I would like to ask the former commissioner of the European Union, Mr. Avramopoulos, to come to the floor. He had a lot of opportunities to meet with Mandela today. He is a board member of the Fight Impunity, an association against impunity and for transitional justice. Mr. Avramopoulos, you have the floor. Mrs. Anastasiadi, Your Excellencies, Mrs. Vardinoyani, Vice President of the... It is with great pleasure that I accepted that invitation, the invitation of Mrs. Variana Vardinoyani, that I would like to thank from the bottom of my heart, but also to congratulate her in order to participate in this very important event that has at its heart our common vision, our duty, but also uh, our decision to continue this noble fight for the promotion of human rights and of the uh, rule of law. This event is above all a tribute for Nelson Mandela, the person who personified the fight against oppression and injustice. He is a symbol for freedom and for the right of every person to have a life full of dignity and equality. In this conjecture, where the uh, moral values that democracy uh, 
was based, uh, was not very, let's say, steady. And South Africa had the apartheid uh, regime with oppression. Nelson Mandela made himself to serve its people in order to fight for justice and equality for all his co-citizens, for all his people. Ignoring the dangers to his life, he fought with courage against a regime that did not allow citizens the right to be, be free citizens in an open and democratic society. Today, human rights violations continue to be a reality in a lot of uh, places around the world. At the same time, impunity protects those in power, since even if they commit crimes, they are not punished. The rise of nationalism and xenophobia, which unfortunately uh, become bigger and bigger, is a threat against people's right to have an equal, and, uh, an equal life full of dignity. Eight years after his death, the President Mandela's vision is more timely than ever. And this is why the international society has a duty to promote human rights and to make it an absolute priority. When I was working as a commissioner for nationality, migration and internal affairs, the promotion of human rights, especially for vulnerable groups, has been at the center of my mandate, but also of the values and principles that I have been serving as a European Commissioner. Today, with this new um, hat that I'm wearing, as a board member of the Fight Impunity Association, I keep contributing with other people to this worldwide effort in order to tackle violations of human rights, massive human rights violations. Our common goal is to end violence, impunity, injustice, and discriminations of any kind. We want our societies to become societies of reconciliation, freedom, justice, and equal opportunities. It is our duty to democracy, and this has been Nelson Mandela visions, not only for his country, but also for uh, the world as a whole. And this is, I believe, that is the message that we want to send today from Athens, the cradle of democracy, if you wish, all around the world through this uh, event. Mrs. Bergenogiani, I would like to congratulate you once more and I would like to thank you for your invitation. Thank you very much, Minister Avramopoulos. I would like to ask the Minister of Justice, Kostas Tsitsaras, to take the floor. Creon has decided that Polynik is Corpse, the brother of Antigone, who has rebelled against the city, does not deserve a proper burial. Antigone rebelled against it, since she believed that there is a law higher than the law of the state. It was her who symbolized our struggle, since she was a fighter for freedom in her own way. This is what Nelson Mandela is writing in order to describe, by using ancient Greek tragedy, his own tragedy and the tragedy of its people. The tragedy of his people segregation, as he experienced it from his childhood at the village base of Cape Town until the Pretoria local prisons and the high security prisons of Robben Island and Portsmouth. His deep connection, Mandela's deep connection with Greece, has shaped through the Greek literature, which has studied in the 27 years of his imprisonment, but 
he was also he had also a deep link and a friendship with Greek people, such as the lawyer George Bezos who worked with him against the apartheid and one of the founders of the South African democracy. Personally, I had the honor and the pleasure to meet him and forge a friendship. In his life, Madiba fought for his tribe and its rights. Nevertheless, from that fight, he managed to uh, reconcile his people, his whole people. His example allowed Africa as a whole to benefit from it. And now he's a symbol against inequality, racism, and uh, intolerance. He is a worldwide symbol of unity and tolerance, of peace, since he is a Nobel Prize laureate, a world symbol of equality of all citizens before the law and the state, and of democracy. Goodwill Ambassador of UNESCO, Mrs. Varjana Varginoyanis, Mrs. Anastasiadi, Mrs. Vice President of the Government, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, at his speech for the International Nelson Mandela Day a few years ago, the uh, Secretary General of the UN, Antonio Gutierrez, has said that the best tribute is our actions. This day of tribute for the life and work of Nelson Mandela let us embrace his legacy and try to imitate his example in favor of world peace, of the rule of law, and in favor of democracy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Minister. And now I would like to ask the Deputy Minister of Labor and Social Affairs in Greece, Domna Mikhailidou, to join me here. Mrs. Mikhailidou, you have the floor. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, Godwill Ambassador of UNESCO, Mr. Katang, dear Vice President of the Government, ladies and gentlemen, dear ministers, dear leaders of the army, friends, dear friends, it is really an honor for me to be here today in an event organized by Vardinoyanis Foundation, which pays tribute to Nelson Mandela, an iconic leader, a great fighter for human rights, which is celebrated every day by the foundation of Mrs. Vardinoyanis. He was born on the 18th of July of 1918, as Mr. Tima said in a small village of South Africa, Nelson Mandela spent his life in the fight against racial inequalities and discrimination. And he did that with empathy and courage. He fought against the apartheid policies and therefore he was sentenced to life imprisonment and he spent 27 years in prison. He became the symbol of the fight against racism all around the world. And in 1993, he was awarded the Nobel Prize. And in 1994, he became the first colored president in the history of South Africa. His victory to the first multiracial general election of his country was not only a tribute to him, but a victory for uh, respect of human rights. His name is today a synonym for ideals such as freedom, equality, justice, fraternity, and love. And his story is an example of a life which is inspired from the vision for a better world. Let us, as Mrs. Anastasiade said, his own words. I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I dream a free society where everyone would live together in harmony and will have equal opportunities. 
It is an ideal that I wish to live, but if needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die for. We live in Greece, in a Western country, in a liberal democracy which has incorporated in her rule of law human rights, and its citizens ought to respect those rights. Nevertheless, any rule of no rule of law is enough in order to uh, make our society safe from discrimination. The respect for human rights is reinforced through reason and persuasion. We should persuade our societies for a peaceful reconciliation. And each one of us would become the wall against racism. This should be our vision, and its realization gets through education and Greek school. We start from the younger age, and by using new educational programs of uh, the kindergartens, we want to teach children to have equal opportunities and to experience differences as a richness and not as a threat. This was what Nelson Mandela believed and spoke for. If someone can learn to hate, then can learn also to love. And love is a better fit to human nature than hatred. Therefore, as the goodwill ambassador of UNESCO, Mrs. Vardinogiani, said earlier, let's make it's Day Nelson Mandela Day. Ubuntu, thank you very much. International Nelson Mandela said International Nelson Mandela Day is a day for justice. And this is why it is very important that we have in our event the uh, our higher judges, and I would like to thank them for being here today. Her Excellency, the Ambassador of South Africa to Greece is together here with us. Mrs. Barry Lowe Sisulu, Your Excellency, you have the floor. President Mariana Vardionis Foundation, Mrs. Mariana, First Lady of Cyprus Republic, Minister of Justice, Deputy President, Chief Executive of Mandela Foundation, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a special joy and honor to be invited to an earlier celebration of Mandela Day tonight and to join this extraordinary circle of friends of Mrs. Mariana Vardinoyanis and her foundation, the hosts, and organizers of this auspicious event. My experience and personal history draws me more to this remarkable woman for her selfless dedication to the cause of humanity. Yesterday, I had the privilege to be invited to the children's hospital that she has helped to build. I was deeply moved by the amount of sacrifice that one person can make to save so many lives. Being a mother myself with a daughter battling cancer for the last 10 years, I'm aware of the pain and the huge costs involved in the treatment of cancer. I'm convinced that had Mariana not stepped in to provide the necessary assistance, it would have been very difficult for the affected families to afford the costly treatment for their loved ones. I applaud her enlightened vision of a world without borders, particularly concerning children's health. 
In my world of diplomacy, many are too well aware of the difficulty of lobbying governments to share resources. But Mariana took a bold step by initiating a health diplomacy initiative in 2020 to campaign for free access to COVID-19 vaccine and other social issues of the pandemic. It was by no means a mistake for Mariana to become the latest laureate of the United Nations Nelson Mandela Prize for 2020. Mariana is not just a philanthropist and a world advocate for human rights and children's health. She practices what she preaches by walking the talk. Chairperson, today, as the world prepares to celebrate the International Mandela Day, we are called upon to reflect on the values of Ubuntu, a form of African humanism that asserts that humanity is affirmed when one recognizes the humanity of others. Ubuntu enjoins us to recognize that we are social beings. One becomes fully human when they are included in relationships with others. It espouses the values of caring, loving, and compassion as standards for being a good member of the community. The Greeks will understand it better when expressed in the philosophical language of Aristotle, when he says, the excellent person is related to his friend in the same way as he is related to himself, since a friend is another himself. In the beautiful country of Mandela's birth, a person who is truly deserving of this extraordinary decoration should be someone who has proved to be selfless and has consistently dedicated their lives to the service of humanity. They should be people who are following in the footsteps of Mandela, living each day as if it was a Mandela day. Chairperson, I've been asked to speak to the topic human rights and education, the vision of a better future. Nelson Mandela, then a young man in the early 1950s, once said this about the importance of education. I quote, education is the great engine of personal development. It is through education that the daughter of a peasant can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine, that the child of a farm worker can become the president of a great nation, I close quotes. Nelson Mandela saw education as the key to success, but success counts for nothing if it, if it cannot benefit the society at large. Education works for society when we can conceptualize it as sustainable education and infuse it with appropriate values and attitudes. Our education curricula should incorporate learning outcomes that speak to the values of Ubuntu, respect for human rights, health interventions, the culture of peace, sustainable consumption, and the protection of the environment. A society armed with this range of tools is empowered to tap into young people's fears and hopes for the future and to challenge and open up their paradigms about the world. It is able to produce agents of change among its members, particularly the youth, to create sustainable futures. Sustainable education aims to reimagine re how knowledge and learning can shape the future of humanity and the planet, given the challenges humanity is currently facing. Like the Mariana Varjuanas Foundation, which embraces the ideals of Ubuntu, sustainable education enables societies 
to build bridges of solidarity among countries and among communities. They transform the lives of others and make sacrifices on behalf of humanity. They become international citizens and are rewarded with honor by peoples and government. Education for sustainable development is fundamental for the achievement of all other rights because it, its benefits are shared in the society at large. It enables upward socioeconomic mobility and is key to escaping poverty, disease, underdevelopment, and tensions within the community. We need to rally behind and campaign for UNESCO's vision of Agenda of Sustainable Development 2030. This vision requires all of us to change our lifestyles and the way we think, the way we act. To achieve this, we need new skills, values, and attitudes that lead to more sustainable societies. This vision is key element of goal four of the Agenda of, for Sustainable Development, known as SDG4. In conclusion, Chairperson, I wish to thank Mariana and the Mariana Varianas Foundation for the good work and to congratulate them for the United Nations Nelson Mandela Prize of 2020. Our congratulations also go to the Nelson Mandela Foundation for obtaining the Mariana Vardionis Foundation Award today. I look forward to working with the Mariana Foundation and to strengthen our ties during my stay in Greece. I thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Ketora, Thadosho to Logo. And now I will give the floor to Rector Ellen Avelaer, who is the uh, member of the Say the Truth to Power. Madam Rector has asked me to uh, speak from her chair. See, you will be. You will be able to listen to her, but not see her. It is due to my age uh, uh, in your chair. Mrs. Avela, you have the floor. Thank you. Democracy. Human rights. Justice. Dialogue. And the fur and the fair contribution of consumers. Those are the foundations of our civilizations. This is what we should teach. This is what should be the goals of education, starting from the family and continuing to school from uh, its first degree. A Nobel laureate of positive si of so sciences was asked which is the most important school, which is, if you wish, the best university, which is the most useful school and the most useful university and the most important. After a lot of thought, he answered, the kindergarten because this is where I learned to wash my hands before eating, before lunch. This is where I learned not to uh, grab my friend's toy. This is where I was taught the rules of play. And last but not least, this is where I taught to offer help to my fellow children and to give my hand in order to cross the road together. And the person who is giving his hand and offering his help is offering their heart. This is what the English say. And this is what true solidarity is all about. To act together with our fellow citizen, fellow human person, despite our religions, languages, and nationalities. This is a form of solidarity 
that was practiced and uh, left behind by iconic people such as Nelson Mandela and maybe Gandhi. We should teach our children foreign languages in order to understand that other people, other civilizations have exactly the same things, have felt the same feelings, but that will allow them to become richer because the only sharing that makes us more rich is when we share our civilizations. Not only, of course, the Greek culture, but also the culture of other people. Let us remember the learning of 1821 and the international teaching, if you wish, Mandela's life. We should fight for freedom, not only our freedom, but also we should not attack other people's freedom. Always bearing in mind that we should do the right thing without waiting for uh, rewards. This is true through to education and through to democracy. We are equal to suffering, we are equal against the state of law and against the law. Each human being has a right to culture and that has been achieved only through virtue that can be taught. I would like to thank Mrs. Vardinoyani who gave me the opportunity to address you today. I would also like to say that that Baldu von Sirach, a Nazi officer who has said that when he is listening to the word civilization, he is drawing his gun. I would like us to say, to teach our children that when we listen to the world civilization and when we listen to the world God, we should draw our culture and our civilization. This is the teaching that we uh, was left behind by great people such as this great person that we honor today, Nelson Mandela and those who look after him. For example, Mrs. Vardinoyani and all those people who were invited here today. Thank you very much, Mrs. Avale. You always have your special way to keep us hanging from your words. Last but not least, we have a great woman that we uh, have uh, the opportunity to welcome and to listen to her a lot of times in Greece for various issues, but above all for a single issue that has devoted her life. I'm talking about Mrs. Kerry Kennedy, who is the president of the Robert Kennedy Human Rights um, Foundation. She has launched the Speak Proof to Power uh, idea, which is also implemented into Greece in collaboration with Mariana Vardinoyanis Foundation. It is yet another educational tool that uh, we should teach children to speak freely and to fight for the freedom of speech. Mrs. Kennedy has sent us a video message. Hi.
I'm Terry Kennedy, and I'm president of Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights. I'm so incredibly honored to join all of you today, especially Mariana Vardinoyanas, who's not only one of my closest, dearest friends, but a woman who I admire so very, very much for her commitment to human rights and to humanity. Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in prison because he advocated an end to the brutal apartheid system of racial segregation, which favored whites violently over blacks. He emerged not only without bitterness and rage, but with a profound commitment to restorative justice, motivated by a heart full of grace. As president of South Africa, Mandela realized that the only way to heal the wounds of apartheid and set the country on a course out of despair and into opportunity was through education. But that education would have to go far behind, be far beyond reading, writing, and arithmetic. It would have to be centered not only on facts, figures, and a disciplined mind, but also a heart full of compassion. And that is what human rights education is all about. Mandela said, no one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite, unquote. Human rights education is based on the notion that students are inherently drawn to the dignity and worth of every human being. And education without a human rights focus can do more harm than good to society. Consider that as UN Human Rights Commissioner Zaid Al Hussein pointed out, eight of the 15 people who planned the Holocaust in 1942 had PhDs. We need not only to educate the next generation, but to imbue them with the skill sets and values of decency and compassion and the knowledge of rights. That is why in partnership with the Mariana Vardinoyanas Foundation, RFK Human Rights is teaching our Speak Truth to Power human rights education course across Greece. Students learn the history of and the concepts within the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Then they apply those concepts to the social justice issues they face in their own communities, from treatment of refugees to access to quality education for everyone to the role of women and girls in society. These lesson plans are sometimes taught as a separate course focused on human rights, but more often they are incorporated into skill sets teachers are already mandated to teach students. So a poetry assignment becomes write a poem about surviving bullying. Learning to write a business letter becomes write a letter to the CEOs of Hershey's and Mars and Godiva about the use of child slavery in the chocolate industry. And students, a math problem becomes centered on how a family of four survives on the minimum wage. Students become more interested in school and teachers become more engaged with students. Social and emotional learning become part and parcel of the education experience. Society is gifted with a generation of students ready for family, ready for work, understanding the ancient Greek concept of citizen and what it means to be a real member of society. Thanks to Mariana's leadership, students in Greece are more engaged in school and interested in knowing their rights than ever before. I can't think of a better way to honor Nelson Mandela. Thank you. Now continuing and uh, going towards the award ceremony, I know that you have all heard the Nelson Mandela Foundation. It was created in 1999 and since then it has an ongoing activity and presence in South Africa but also in the whole world. By promoting the ideals of Mandela, those ideas that we have uh, uh, spoken, uh, that we have heard before by Mrs. Avelev. We have the great honor to have today among us the CEO of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, Mr. Selo Hatang. 
the Mardian Avartin Organis Foundation has uh, decided this year to uh, give the honorary award of 2021 to the Nelson Mandela Foundation and, of course, to its CEO, Mr. Selo Hatang. Mrs. Vardinogiani, if you wish, join us, please, in order to uh, give the award to uh, Mr. Hatang. As you have seen, it is a branch of olive, this uh, award, this symbol for peace and a symbol of Athens. Mr. Hatang, would you please take the floor? Thank you so much, uh, Master of Ceremonies. Uh, I can never be more grateful for being here in Greece in your presence, Mrs. Vadi Noyanis. Your words here, uh, the audience didn't hear, and I'm not going to tell you. Uh, she, she just uh, whispered some sweet words to say, keep g going hard and doing the work that needs to be done. So for that, I'm forever grateful. Ambassador Sisulu, uh, the Deputy President, members of the clergy, represented uh, by the Archbishop, ministers, deputy ministers, the academy, Honored guests, uh, members of the army, let me again congratulate you, Mariana, on getting the UN 2020 Mandela Prize. I can never again emphasize what my language says in my mother tongue. Um, it uh, briefly just says that literally that um, the mother will hold the sharp end of the knife in order to defend. Uh, the child, and we see you as that mother who holds the sharp end for those who are vulnerable, for those who feel that they have been discarded, the world has forgotten about them, and those who are left out, you bring them in by holding that knife at the knife's edge so that they then can succeed. So our gratitude to you also in the foundation for my award and the award to the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Madiba receiving similar awards noted that I'm just a simple rural boy. I don't understand what the fuss is of giving me awards, he said. But if they are to do anything to help me so that I can help others, may they keep coming so that they can help me, give me hope. So as the foundation, we feel encouraged by this award and we know that we will honor you by continuing to do our best. It is a special pleasure for me to be here in Greece, my very first visit. Nelson Mandela, as I'm sure you know, had a deep respect for ideas and literatures which emerged in ancient Greece. While in prison, he enjoyed reading and acting in the classic Greek tragedies. In 2002, at a function with the then Greek president, he said, and I quote, Mr. President, the history of your country inspired and continues to inspire 
the quest for freedom in many parts of the world. Your philosophers and their thoughts on democracy, freedom, governance, morality, and justice have been shining beacons to freedom fighters and freedom-loving people over the centuries. Our own liberation struggle drew deeply on that fount of wisdom, he said. He continued, no democracy in the world can celebrate itself without paying homage to this ancient cradle of democracy. We all owe part of our democracy, democratic self-understanding to this heritage. And I conclude again when, when he said, ancient Greece, the cradle of democracy and democratic thought was a constant source of reference and inspiration to us in our struggle for freedom. I have no doubt that you will agree with me that Madiba had such great respect for Greece and her people. It is only fitting that the award came home to Greece through your work, Mariana. So for that again, we are grateful and we congratulate you. One of Mr. Mandela's longest friendships, world-renowned um, human rights lawyer, advocate George Bezos, who was, of course, Greek-born and very proud of his Greek heritage. I was privileged to get to know Advocate Bezos really well in the last decade of his life. The theme for tonight, for this keynote address, feels profoundly appro appropriate. For Nelson Mandela, the nexus of human rights and education was precisely the space in which human beings can liberate themselves. Not surprisingly, then that uh, the Nelson Mandela Foundation, which is a human rights-oriented not-for-profit organization, has as one of its strong focus areas the field of education. That is important that we start with preschoolers to change how society changes, how it thinks about itself, and uh, it can run itself. I want to maybe pause here and just tell you that uh, I was born of a single parent, a mother of six children, illiterate. She could hardly read or write, could sign, not sign her, uh, her name. Um, she had to always mark an X or use her fingerprint to sign. So by all measures, I should have failed. Society had put all impediments along the way for me to fail. I come from a small rural uh, place, which uh, is actually um, a mining town in the Northwest province. And if when I was 12, 14, 16, 20, if you told me that today I will be standing here, that I would have shook the hand of Nelson Mandela, would have worked with him, that I would have worked with people like uh, President Obama, I would have thought that you needed something to calm down the drugs that you were on because chances were I should have failed. And I think what we are doing with early childhood development work that the Nelson Mandela Foundation is working on is to try level the playing field. Make sure that every child has a fighting chance to succeed. That's why we start with the environment. We have a project where we've went around the country registering um, early childhood development centers. Government had only 20,000 that they recognized. By the end of the project last year, we had gone around the country and found 60,000 early childhood development centers. It tells you that the 40,000 would have been forgotten. They would have been the people that Mariana cares about, who says they shouldn't be forgotten. All lives matter. And their lives matter and they count too. And I think with the project that we have, and I'm hoping that we will do something with the, the foundation on this early childhood development work so that we can then continue to give children a fighting chance to succeed. So I think uh, it's, it's important that we then emphasize that education has given me a chance to succeed and it can change the lives of many others behind me. And I think if we are, there's one lesson that we should learn is that we need to lift as we rise. So bring up others as we go higher in society. So as we touch on democracy, democracy 
like freedom, like justice, is always something that we are reaching for, reimagining, reinventing. This insight informed a process of deep reflection by the foundation, the foundation's board in 2017. And I want to share some of those, the thinking and analysis from that. So the work that I have been describing has been driven simultaneously by the imperative to respond to the immediate needs of society's most vulnerable and by the vision of a bit better future. Democracy cannot afford to leave communities behind. It cannot afford to simply discard people, forget people. What COVID-19 has shown us and what climate change ultimately will demonstrate to us as well is that a liberatory future for humanity is only possible if we insist on the concept of a shared future. And that concept, and that concept will force us to begin doing differently. The hour is late. I believe we are running out of time. Like Nelson Mandela said, we may dare not linger. As you know, he closed Long Walk to Freedom by saying that you reach the top of the mountain. Like Mariana has with her award, she reached the top of the mountain, but he then says, you look down to only find that there are many more valleys to cross and rivers to cross and more mountains to climb. So we hope that you'll continue to climb with us. Let me end on a hopeful note. I listened to almost all the speakers. Each one of them had the word hope in their speeches. Madiba is an ancestor of hope. And I want to quote someone that he respected, um, Vatlav Havel, who said, and I quote, I'm not an optimist because I'm not sure that everything ends well, nor am I a pessimist because I'm not sure that everything ends badly. I just carry hope in my heart. Hope is the feeling that life and work have a meaning. You either have it or you don't, regardless of the state of the world that surrounds you. Life without hope is an empty, boring, and useless life, he says. I cannot imagine that I could strive for something if I did not carry hope in me. I'm thankful to God for this gift. It is as big as life itself. And Madiba said, as I close, the world remains beset by so much human suffering, poverty, and inequality. It is in your hands to help build a different world. To you, Mariana, we say you keep showing us the way. We hope that we will take the baton of leadership and help build that world that Madiba dreamt of. I thank you very much. Thank you so much, Seloha Tang, for this inspired and inspiring speech. If you allow me now for one minute to say that the professional sickness that plagues journalists is realism because you listen to a lot of things and at a time you don't care about anything. You need some injections of hope against this realism. I had the opportunity to uh, get injected by hope when I went to Robben Island, this prison, at the cell of Nelson Mandela. If you go in this cell and if you're not moved, it means that you are plagued by the same disease. So from that cell, Nelson Mandela read letters from the prison, which are really moving. The kids uh, uh, are students of the artistic Islam of Yerakas, and they will read some uh, uh, letters written by Nelson Mandela. You will see some paintings, some pictures, which are artworks of Greek students inspired by the words of Nelson Mandela. It was uh, they were created in the framework of the children's painting competition in 2021, organized by Mariana Vardinogiannis Foundation. 
inspired by the quote that if there are dreams, then there are ways leading to that goal. Then at your bag, at your goodie bag, you will find those pictures of the children and we will announce the winners uh, on the 18th of July and you will also find the second edition uh, of uh, the program The Truth to Power. Now, um, students, you have the floor. High security prisons of Robin Island to the uh, Commission of Prisons, Pretoria, July 1976, for the General Dupres. I would like to uh, ask you to say that there are misused powers, political persecutions, and other illegal actions by the um, manager of that prison. When we had a meeting with the board of the prisons, the uh, head asked a colored prisoner uh, his uh, view about the uh, cultures of by doing that part of the prison. When that prison asked that his African peers are educated and cultivated persons and he felt a huge respect for them and that we all got along, then the head of the prison uh, took, talked very badly and he described Africans as persons that have a low civil low knowledge and civilization that roamed the country half naked. It is dangerous to trust the well-being of the prisoners to officers who have racist views. And it is a misuse of power to make use of the official positions in their efforts to um, make uh, prisoners fight among each other. We reject apartheid in its every form and the head of the prison had no route whatsoever to try and sell his, his idea, an idea that we believe is diabolic and dangerous. The behavior of those officials is not only against uh, the official policies but is also a misuse of power. 23 June of 1969 to uh, Zenani and Zinti Madela, their daughters, my darlings. Once again, our beloved mommy has been arrested and now she and daddy are aware in jail. My heart bleeds as I think of her sitting uh, in uh, some police cell far away from home, perhaps alone and without anybody to talk to and with nothing to read longing for her children. It may be many months or even years before you see her again. For long, you may be as orphans without the, your own home and parents, without the natural love, affection and protection mommy used to give you. Gone are the days when after having a warm bath in the evening, you would sit at table with mommy and enjoy her good and simple food. Gone are the comfortable beds, the warm blankets and the clean linen she used to provide. She will not be there to arrange for friends to take you to bioscopes, concerts and plays, or to tell you nice stories in the evenings, help you read difficult books and to answer the many questions you would like to ask. She will be unable to give you the help and guidance you would need as you grow older and as new problems arise. Perhaps never again mommy and daddy will join you in the house of Orlando West, the only place which is so dear to our hearts. This is not the first time mommy goes to jail. In October 1958, only four months after our wedding, she was arrested with 2,000 other women when they protested against passes in Johannesburg and spent two weeks in jail. Last year she served four days, but now she has gone back again and I cannot tell you how long she will be away this time. All that I wish you always to bear in mind is that we have a brave and determined man who loves her people with all her heart. She gave up pleasure and comfort for a life full of hardship and misery because of the deep love she has for her people and country. 
when you become adults and think carefully of the unpleasant experiences mommy has gone through and the stubbornness with which she has held to her beliefs, you will begin to realize the importance of her contribution in the battle for truth and justice and to the extent of which she has sacrificed her own personal interests and happiness. 23 June 1969 to Winnie Mandela, his wife. My darling, one of my precious possessions here is the first letter you wrote me on 20th December 1962, shortly after my first conviction. During the last six and a half years, I have read it over and over again, and the sentiments it expresses are as golden and fresh now as they were the day I, I received it. With the aspirations and views that you hold and the role you are playing in the current battle of ideas, I have always known that you would be arrested sooner or later. For some time I have cold and lonely and this is why I kept reading your letter. For most people do not realize that your physical presence will have meant nothing to me if the ideas for which you have dedicated your life have not been realized. I find living in hope is the most wonderful thing. Our short lives together, my love, have always been full of expectation. In these hectic and violent years, I have grown to love you more than I ever did before. Nothing can be as valuable as being part and parcel of the formation of the history of the country. Those are some of the diamonds included in this uh, wonderful letter. And after I laid it back at the 17th of May, I felt once more on top of the world. Disasters will always come and go, leaving their victims either completely broken or steeled and seasoned and better able to face the next challenges that may occur. It is precisely at the present moment that you should remember that hope is a powerful weapon and one no power on earth can deprive of you of, and that nothing can be as valuable as being part and parcel of a history of the country. Permanent values in social life and thought cannot be created by people who are indifferent or hostile to the true aspirations of a nation. For one thing, those who have no soul, no sense of national pride and no ideals to win can suffer neither humiliation nor defeat. They can evolve no national heritage, are inspired by no sacred mission and can produce no martyrs or national heroes. A new world will be won not by those who stand at limits to move about distance with their arms folded but by those who are in the arena, whose arms are torn by the storms and whose bodies are maimed. The honor belongs to those who never go away from truth, even when things are seem bleak. Those who try again and again, who are never discouraged by insults, humiliation or even defeat. Since the dawn of history, mankind has honored and respected brave and honest people, men and women like you, darling, an ordinary girl who hails from a country village, hardly shown in most maps, wife of a kraal, which is the humblest even by peasant standards.
outside my window in the shadows of the night. I see the sun just in crying, the darkness multiplying, and weary hearts deny. All I feel is my heart beating like a drum, beating with confusion. And the pain and the illusion disappear again, but we will never I listen for your call I listen for your heartbeat Alone my dream is just a dream Another false illusion A shadow in the night All I want is for our hearts To be beating just as one Confusion and the pain, and the illusion disappear again. And we will never run, cause in my African dream, there will be tomorrow.
Patricia, thank you. I would like to introduce Patricia. She comes from Cape Town, but she has been for so many years in Greece. That is a living bridge between Greece and South Africa, between Europe and Africa. And this is a, a song that brings us back to her uh, other country. Now, let us. Uh, leave music say the last word i have the pleasure to announce you that we have today a very important composer who has uh, who is an emmy award winning hollywood composer so he is going to say good night with his piano mark chait is here with us mark has written song by the title Forever Going Home and we will listen to that song which is the its world premiere it will be uh, played for the first time here in Greece and I leave you to take your stand at the piano and say good night
Is it on? As a world traveler, I have traveled the world. And now that I live in Athens, I am still a child of Africa. I was born in Cape Town, South Africa. And as a child, I would walk along the seashore and I would look out to Robben Island. And I never dreamed that one day I'd be sitting here having dedicated a song that I wrote for Nelson Mandela. And this is the first time I've ever performed this in public. I'm forever going home No matter where I am Or how far I've gone I get closer every day Closer to the place where I come from And change is all around me it's in your eyes, it's everywhere So go to wherever your heart leads you I'll be grateful that you were here Go unto the mountain Over the river and onto the sea home again you'll find yourself thinking of me I'm forever going home going to the land where the diamond doves fly to the sound of paws on the wind to the desert and the wide open sky So go alone Go with me Go to wherever You were meant You were meant to be Your heart leads you. I'll be grateful that you were here. I'm forever going home. I'm forever going home. I'm forever. I'm forever going home.